Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Tara, a farmer from Northern California and this channel is mainly about farming, but sometimes it's not. And today we are going on a field trip. Okay, so for today's field trip, we are in Edison, California with Johnston Farms. Yeah. And this is Jacqueline. Hi. And you are a Johnston. I am a Johnston. You are a Johnston. So do you wanna explain a little bit about the history of your family's farm? Yeah, so I am a fourth generation. We're a family farm. Uh, we started in the 1950s, um, but the very first crop was planted in about 1947. It was potatoes. Uh, my great grandfather actually worked for the railroad. Oh, and in Oregon, and he, uh, you know, he actually was in charge of bringing food to the internment camps during World War II. Wow! And uh, after the end of the war, they wanted to move him to San Francisco, but he was a big outdoors guy, hunter, fisher. And when he, when they said you're going to San Francisco, he said no way, and he cashed out his life savings bought potatoes, planted them, made money that year, and that's how the farm started. Okay. So, um, since so, then... Yeah, how did he end up here? I or was he never know. here? No, no he, he, he was here. He was here, He, he okay. was here, yeah. The first potato crop was planted here. Okay. Um, I think there was just a boom in agriculture here, and so yeah. that's what brought him down. And um, so from there, we did potatoes, we've done cotton and other things. Uh, we bought our first orange crop in the 60s. Okay. And then, um, so our potato shed was built in the 60s our orange shed was built in the 90s and then um and then yeah from there we've just kind of diversified and grown okay and is oranges your biggest crop uh yes oranges so, is the biggest yeah that's probably about uh or, or between oranges grapefruit and mandarin citrus okay. is probably about um 60 of the total land okay that we do um, and it is our longest season. Okay, and then what are some other crops you guys grow, um, you know, on a normal basis? Yeah, so uh, we also do potatoes. Okay. And we also pack our own potatoes, uh, but we also grow lemons, which okay. goes to a packing house on the coast. Okay. And we grow carrots, which we'll go see them harvest carrots in a little bit. Okay. And that goes through So they're harvesting house. carrots right yeah. now, so yeah. that's cool. And we're gonna get to see the packing house and hopefully the nursery too. Yes. So yeah. we're gonna see like the full circle yeah. of everything From here. From seed to pack. See yeah. The box. Yeah, and you guys do it all. All which of it. Which is so awesome. <laughs> so we are in one of their naval orange fields. Yep. And these are being harvested this time of year. This yep. is the time of year yes. they get harvested. These are our autumn gold, so these are our late navels. Um, so we will start harvesting them soon. Okay. Um, but yeah, so oranges are typically harvested starting last week of October to first week of November. Okay. Um, and then uh, they'll go through March. Oh, first week of November. Yeah. So one thing I should say, because I don't know when this video will come out, but we're in like the second week of January right, right. now. So this is a late one, you said? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So these are, these will be start being harvested soon. Okay, soon. Yeah, but we have navel oranges. This is, uh, there's two varieties of oranges. There's navels, which okay. are typically your fall, winter, spring oranges, and then you have Valencia's, and those are the ones you'll see kind of starting, you know, May, June. So those are your summer oranges. Oh, okay. And the big difference, you'll know a navel because of... They've the navel. got like the, yeah. The navel at the bottom. So what is this white stuff on them that we see? This, oh, there's a good. Um, there's a good one. <laughs> got its belly button. Um, so it's actually whitewash. So it's copper, zinc, and something. Oh, lime. lime. And um, it's a fungicide. Okay. So it'll help keep the um, you know, bacteria and fungicide and rot. But it also, we put it on in the summer because it's sunscreen. So just like you put zinc on your nose, mm -hmm. we'll put zinc on the trees. So that way, because um, it does get 100, 105 here, it'll protect the oranges in the summer and keep them from getting sunburned. Okay. So, um, so yeah, so that's what the white, and it's, it's all natural, you know, so um, we are not organic farmers, but this is a chemical that organic farms do use yeah. as well. 
so yeah and we're gonna see in the packing house that everything goes through like a five-step washing process yeah. a very intense washing process so even if it wasn't yeah. it's all getting it's washed off yeah. <laughs> yeah it's really getting washed off so do you do much of the farming or have you in the past or you like to be in the office um i'm trying to get more out here uh than i am right now okay uh right now most of my day-to-day -day stuff is um supply chain processing regulation stuff. So mm -hmm. I'm doing a lot of the food safety. I'm doing a lot of the government regulations. I'm doing a lot of the the reporting and the tracking and the tracing. Right. And um, the, the joke is that I basically do everything that my dad no longer wants to do. <laughs> so yeah. if something comes across- I feel that, <laughs> right. I feel that a lot. <laughs> so something comes across his desk and he's like, I've been doing this too long. This is, you know, I'm yeah. not gonna bother. It, it comes to me. Okay. So, um, so my cousins, my dad's, it's actually my dad's cousin and his son do a lot of the farming. So they're, they're the ones that work okay. on the planting and the mm -hmm. harvesting and making sure the compost gets put down mm -hmm. and the gypsum and um, making sure the planting schedules stay on track. Okay. So that's them. And then um, I kind of do a lot of the oversight stuff on top of that. And then my other cousin, Derek, does the sales. So he manages a lot of the sales. Okay. So yeah, we kind of divide and conquer in our yeah. family. Yeah, so big family project. And then so it sounds like dad and a cousin do most of the farming stuff or farm management right. stuff. Once you guys plant the trees, how long does it take to get a crop off of them? Uh, so lemons is the quickest. That one's about two or three years, is it? Okay. Um, mandarins is the longest. That's closer to five to six years. And wow. oranges is about four to five years. Wow, like my grapes took three years and yeah. I was like, this is a long time <laughs> because my family before the grapes always did like just w corn and things like that. You'd harvest that year, yeah. you know? So waiting three years was a lot, but wow, waiting six years for, um, yeah. that's a lot. lot. Yeah. And so much work has to go into it before you can actually right. harvest. Well, and a lot of times um, it's like at the nursery, um, when they so and you'll see they plant the seed and they have to graft it over. Yes, but it's it, it's a year from the time. I mean, they're taking already orders yep. for 2022. Mm -hmm. So I mean, so we're talking, you know, five six years out in the field. There's another year or two in front of that down at down at the nursery as well. Yeah. So for the tree to get to a point where it can actually produce fruit. Yes, that was the same for the vines for me because I got them grafted too. Yeah. Do you know how old these trees are? I mean, this is obviously a full grown. Yeah, yeah. Because um, I see some tiny ones. Are those tiny, just like replants? These are replants, yeah. So um, I want to say these are 20 years old. Oh, wow. Ish, maybe 15. And then do you know how long they live on average? Uh, we have some trees that are 100 years old. 100 years old. They usually stop producing. I think usually around 30 years. Oh, we'll okay. Double check. Like that's when it starts to decline. Yep. Mm -hmm. So um, so we usually get pulled out, but we do have a handful of trees that are just... They're killing it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's the same as grapes, I feel like, because... And it's also about what kind of ground they're on, obviously, yeah. and how they've been taken care of and stuff. Because I'd say grapes, you know, a lot of people do 30, 40 years. It's, yeah. But I mean, Lodi's got that 100-year-old Zin for right. sure you know they yeah. do so yeah and and depends on the crop and all that different kind of stuff yeah wow yeah 100 years old so um and they'll get huge too the um, trees yeah they'll get so these we do go in and we hedge them i was gonna say do you do any kind of pruning yeah okay we have a do you just get like those huge like fan mm -hmm. they look like big fans they yeah. just chop it chop it yep and then okay. um the smaller ones we'll do it's called suckering you'll see on the small oh. trees like if you see on a, like a small citrus tree you'll see like a random like like just stick and mm -hmm. it doesn't look like the rest of the tree that's the original root stock so we're out in the field right now and there is this huge windmill it's got two blades on the top these are kind of scattered throughout right so what exactly is the purpose of this windmill uh so where we are now it's kind of a, a bit of a valley and so it does get cold right through here uh, these kick on automatically at 32 or 33 degrees. And what it does is it keeps the air temperature up on the oranges. Oranges typically freeze at 27 degrees um, because of the sugar content, they can get colder. And what the uh, wind machines do is it brings in the warm air and it keeps it down lower. So it'll keep all of the oranges in the general vicinity warmer. If the oranges froze, would you lose the whole crop? You can, okay. uh, we have had that happen. Um, we had one year where it froze, but it was it was a wet freeze. Okay. And so all of our oranges were coated with icicles. Oh, wow. And we were actually able to save about half of the crop because when a uh, there's a coating of ice around the oranges, 
it doesn't get any colder than 32 degrees. Once there's ice on that, once there's ice, it doesn't get colder than 32. Wow. So the, the ones that were coated in um, ice that year were able to save and we were able to pack still. They were a lower quality, but we were able to still pack them. Okay. But when you have a dry freeze, um, when it's just clear and it hits 20 degrees, yeah, you'll lose, you'll lose the entire crop. So we briefly talked about how uh, the citrus is all grafted onto a rootstock, which we're gonna learn more about later. And if you've been on my channel for a while, you've probably seen the orange tree I have at my house and everyone gets upset that there's so many oranges on it. <laughs> I've tried to explain, they taste terrible and they have these crazy spikes on it. Well, after talking to a few people, I think I figured out that my orange tree is the rootstock. So it never was grafted to like a more edible orange. So she was saying how sometimes the rootstock will grow and here's a perfect example this is the rootstock shooting up so this is the variety i guess you yeah, could call it one. you can see the spikes see the little baby ow i just stabbed myself <laughs> it's got spikes on it but this one doesn't so the one that actually has the uh, it's got a little little, little tiny ones. guys but yeah, these one doesn't. these ones get vicious guys that one might yeah, and when you go through and you cut back the rootstock, it's actually called suckering. Suckering. So, um, but yeah, you'll go through on young trees, you'll have to do this uh, um, quite a bit. And then this tree is younger or smaller than the rest because this is a replant. There was a tree here at one point and it was sick. And so to prevent it getting from the rest of the crop sick or just because it wasn't producing, we'll pull it out and replant it. So this is a younger tree and then you'll have to go through and you'll have to sucker the rootstock so that way you don't have giant thorns. And also what happens is too much energy is being thrown into that rootstock and you're not enough energy thrown into the tree. So if you don't trim those back, you won't get an, as much production on the actual oranges. Right, because so it'll just it. keep growing that. But yeah. <laughs> is it just a one-time thing or do you kind of have to keep fighting that? You, uh, until it gets to a certain age. Okay. Um, but yeah, you, first, I think we go through the first I think it's 10 years and you I mean it's not every year right it's, it's maybe a couple times like right two or three times so okay. the younger trees you'll have to do it a lot you'll have to do it once a year in the young ones next we are headed to the johnston family packaging facility where we are going to see where all their citrus gets washed sorted sorted some more and then put into boxes so it can get shipped to a grocery store near you let's take a look hook up to it right now but I'm gonna do it anyways he's got to roll the feet up okay. okay so this is baby carrots we think wow that's a lot of carrots yeah I know dangerous 
Yeah, they do the same thing with, with corn when we harvest it. You know what? You'll have to roll those feet up, I'm almost sure. So we got a lot of carrots left behind. Yeah. So is this what your daughter harvests? That's what she gets, yeah. <laughs> with her, uh, with her little red with wagon. Her wagon. An ugly carrot. That's okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, there's always some left behind. It's just, it's... And it gets all dissed back in, I guess, right? Yeah. So this row has been harvested. Yes. Yeah, they dig it straight out of the ground. Carrots. And these will be baby carrots. Yes. That like if you get bags. Right, right. So the baby carrots are in a variety of them to be long and skinny. Okay. And that way they, when they go to the They're kind of like round them off, right? Right, right. So um, yeah, baby carrot is actually real long and they cut it up into pieces and peel it. Okay. So whereas uh, jumbo carrots are where the more like Bugs Bunny traditional carrot shape. Right, right. So. And then what are, the, uh, what are those carrots used for the jumbo ones? Is that like just what you would buy at the store to use for whatever? Or a food service, they might go to a processor, get chopped up or, or whatever. Okay. But yeah. What about like shredded carrots? Are that, do they use a certain kind for Honestly, those, do you know? I don't. Okay. But I want to say I read somewhere that um, the shredded carrots are actually a lot of the excess of the baby carrots. Okay, I was, I was, I was like, kind of wondering, yeah, you know, because like, it seems like they'd waste a lot doing that. Right, so ba like baby carrots are actually one of the most, um, like our least wasteful foods out there. Oh, I remember. nice. I, and I have to double check. This. Yeah, yeah. But I remember hearing somewhere that it's like, like a lot of the waste gets used for like cow feed or like mm -hmm. dog food. And then you have like, and then it used to shredded carrots and mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah. But, um, it's actually, I think a family here in Bakersfield that was like started the, the baby carrots. So. I would believe that. I believe yeah. that. I, I think a lot of things started in the central Valley, you yeah. know? Okay. So do you know what it takes to grow a carrot? Do you know the process? So they've come, they, they're planted with little tiny seeds and they go and they, they have a, they have a, seed planter and it goes and it plants it along uh we can get two crops a year okay um so but yeah they just they're planted in the ground um and then these were probably planted i want to say september october okay i'll have to double check that and then um yeah this water fertilization um before we harvest the ground has to be wet a little bit if anyone's ever try to yank a carrot to the ground like they'd want, it's impossible. Okay. Um, so you really water it before harvesting. Right, right. Okay. Yeah, just to soften up the ground so that way when they, they can easily pull it out. Yeah, and it out. seems like this, I mean, I am not an, a soil expert, but like, is this considered sandy? Sandy you know? loam. Sandy loam, okay, yeah. yeah. So I was gonna say like, if it got too, like for us, if our stuff gets too wet, it's just like mud. Mud, yeah. No. You can't do it. So it kind of does need to be planted in this kind of soil. Right, right. And this so. harvester is so cool. I've I've never seen anything like yeah. it. So we'll actually stand on this side of it, right? And then I'll be able to see the carrots coming up. So how many how many rows does a harvest at a time? Do you know? We'll looks, find looks out. It's like what, two. Two. So yeah. we'll try to get to a safe zone. Don't want to get run over. Don't want to smush the. Nothing happens at the tops, I yeah, assume, right? I do they get kind of get chopped off during the process, or do they all? You'll see actually that with what the harvester is grabbing is grabbing the top of the carrot, the, the green part of the carrot. Okay. So you'll see the, the green part above the belts and the carrot hanging down below. Okay. And then at the processing facility, they'll cut it off. But, oh, um, okay. But the tops of the plant are edible. So I've oh, actually really? had a uh, carrot top pesto. Oh. And you can cut it and you kind of use it like a, you know, um, like a, I guess like a lettuce or like a, or an herb. So if so. people get carrots with the tops, look into a way to use it. Yeah. yeah Don't just edible. toss it. And it's, I mean. Are they all, do you know? I think so, yeah. Just, yeah, I mean, when I had it, like someone made me carrot top pesto, it was delicious, but pesto has a lot of like cheese and olive oil and garlic. And yeah, so. there was other things in it. <laughs> but hey, I don't then know. If, then you maybe you don't have to waste it though. Yeah. You know, if you can, if you can utilize it. We harvest potatoes as far as the, the trailers right there very similar. We did the potato digger, and then we have a tractor and trailers driving next to him. Okay. So that part, that process is similar, although the digger is a much smaller Different. piece of equipment. Oh, much sure. smaller. Okay. So. And then those trucks go straight on the road. They'll go on the road, um, and then they'll go straight to the processing plant. Wow. And then, do you guys process your carrots or no? no? We have someone we else. Have, uh, we have a different farmer that does that for us. So right there is our Mercots. 
right. Is that a different kind That's of? That's a different kind of mandarin. Okay, mandarin. And then uh, the orange grove right next to it right here, those are some more just regular oranges. Okay. Carrots, and then that dirt field right there are potatoes we just planted. Okay. So just in this one little, so do little 160 acres. Yeah, that's awesome. But we mm -hmm. also have a huge solar plant on top of one of those hills right there. You do? Yeah. Not I was plants. wondering what was over there. Yeah, and so we have a I, th I thought I, you said how there's a dump somewhere, and I thought oh, maybe okay. that's the dump. Because you know the dump, sometimes they build up the sides yeah. like that. No, there's a, um, uh, it's just, it's a sand hill, essentially. But uh, we do have solar panels up there that power all of our wells. So, and we're working on installing solar at our packing facility. And so after, after those get installed, we'll be, I think it's 85% solar power. That's amazing. Yeah. And then um, we use propane and stuff for a lot of powering like the dryers and stuff. So I think overall we're like 95% clean energy. Wow. So, well, that's an accomplishment yeah. and that's so great. So is it pretty big? It's huge. It's huge. Yeah. Like the whole side of like yeah. on the other side of that hill there. So. Yeah, you can see, usually when it's not quite so hazy, you can see it, but. Okay. Everyone likes big machinery. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. Sustainability. It's who we are and what we do. We're in it for the good of farmers. We're increasing the livelihoods and sustainable practices of 500 million smallholder farmers. We're in it for good.